information has never been done before, never, because the photonic forms aren't solid. So I found out how to do the top rows, well, which is all doing at edges, and I found out that there, are, when I put two together, there are two cubes. Uh, what's interesting about the bottom here, this bottom series right here, it goes across right here. Uh, when I tried to find the dual of this, uh, um, Dr. Mr. Glockler told me that if I could find uh, the dual of the seven-sided form, then that would be the form that goes around our heart when we leave our body at night and then it's reconstructed around this form. This form would be very good for heart patients and so forth. So I studied it and he said, well, it's going to probably be 14 because that's 7. Well, it didn't turn out to be that way. It turned out to be 13. 13. 7 and 13. That's interesting. Not 14, but 13. And so I made it. I found out that this is the form that goes around this shape that makes a dual. And it's 13 sided. Can you say what you mean it's by dual? I'm sorry. What does dual mean? It makes, it makes a dual. What a dual. Uh, a dual is where you take all the corners of a cube and you push them all together and it makes a tetrahedron. So that means that's a lawful form that's inside the other form when it transforms. Okay, so inside this 13 sided form is the 7. Okay, and that's a configuration that goes around the heart, okay, geometrically at night. So to make sure that that is correct, you have to make sure that it can go inside a seven-sided form and touch, and it does. So this is the lawful dual transformation of bringing these together. You know, a lot of things I'm saying, is, you know, I've studied this for so I don't know, 10 years, and you've seen it for 15 minutes. So, you know, be patient with yourself. I, I try to show you. But the idea, this is spiritual science. This is what we need to do. Okay, so anyway. It goes all the way around. So now I know that this is lawful. And so I show all these white corners. I show the two ends, the two extremes, and then the, set, the 13 inside. Okay, so the 13 form. Okay, if you look at the small cupola in the Gertianum, you have six on one side, six on the other side, and the representative of mankind. And that's the 13. So we have a geometric form that shows the 13. There's no 13 form before. Okay, so here we go. It shows you this again in a different way. Or it might be the same way. I think I spin it off the other side. I do. Let's see if it does. But this gives you an idea of where this form is coming from. That's the same one, which is good. Unless it comes off the other side. Now there it comes out. The seven-sided form. So you can see that lawfully what this is and where it's coming from. Which is why I repeat it. Because... It's amazing that this bell shape huh, could be possibly the geometry of the human heart. Okay, so the next thing I go to here uh, is how these two are related. So the first form in this hall sphere here is a tetrahedron, that clear one with the nice edges, and the one that's in the middle, okay, which is blue, I decided that I was going to put that back into the seven sided form. I want to put it back into the, uh, the tetrahedron. So here's the tetrahedron here, and the form inside it. Right? You follow me how I did that? I took the, I took the, the two that were uh, apart, which was the first one and the middle one. I put the middle one back into the first one, and there they are together. Then I spun this again. I took this to the, the cube again, and I got this configuration. Now the red one in there is this one. Here is the red. This is the one that you're seeing in there inside the plastic seven-sided form. Okay. So what I found out is that this shape, when I put it into minimum surfaces, which is a bubble, I put this into a bubble, it looks like this. Now if I contract this form, remember expansion and contraction, so we always got to work with, when I contract this form, not expanded, but contracted. It looks like this. There are three spirals. One going this way, one going this way, and one going this way. Now, at the top of the heart, you have three forms, three lines that come into <coughs> a point, which is a triangle. 
and there's a triangle on the outside which makes the second circle. This is where the aorta valve comes out, right here. This is the nitric valve. This is the valve that comes from the lungs. Okay? It goes in here to the spiral and then expands into this form and then empties again into the geometry back into an organic form. So I will show you these. I'll put these in an order here like they are supposed to be. I will show you this on the graph. Here is the real heart. Uh, this is the outside form of a real heart. If I put a circle around that form, which it is a circle, and then I spin it with a triangle, it makes exactly the size of the vowel at the top of the heart. And inside the heart, when the heart is completely empty, it looks like this. There's a the triangle. There is the three lines that are coming together. So if I look at this in relationship to the outside form, you can see that's why it's a triangle. The geometry is showing you that the inside of the heart, okay, is based on three. That's why you have a tricuspid valve. Okay. So during this time, I decided that I would try to find out what's going on here. So I found out that basically the vortex is at 22 and a half degrees. That means that I could take 20 and a half degrees and put it over the form and all the points touched. And if I took that same one and put it inside, it came right to the point. I opened it up so it would. Okay, so that means that the outside of the form and the inside of the form are parallel. Uh, parallel lines. Alright, so that's really important because that's the thickness of the muscles. So what I did was this. I took up a, a plate, sheet of plastic, I put lines across it because projecting geometry is the point and I always show lines, so I did that. So I decided to find out what kind of cone that was. So I know if I twist it into one, see if I twist this all the way around, I have two cones. Yeah, right? I mean it's logical. I twist it all around. And this is not any of the buff that nobody's ever seen this. This is really funny. Alright, if I twist it all the way around until it becomes one, see how I bring it together, I know where it is. You know, I, I'm not cheating. Okay, so there's, there's two cones. What happens to the lines? They start to curve. But this isn't going to go inside. It won't go in there. Well, that doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to do it again. So I twist it around like this, and I make sure that when it comes together again, you know, I can see right through the plastic, I can see where it comes together. This plastic is kind of tough, but I need it to be that way. So I bring it all the way around until it meets. See if it meets, not quite yet. There it's meeting. There are all triangles! <laughs> what, what is this? Never seen this before in this thing. They're all triangles. There's triangles based on them? I won't go in. I'm going to go again. So I go in and twist it again. I'm doing this in my living room. And I do it all the way. They're all squares. <laughs> Think of this. That's amazing this happened. This isn't ha this isn't me. All I'm doing is twisting it together. So it doesn't it does, still doesn't fit. So I said, okay, um, what do I have to do? So I twisted it again, one half turn, and it turned into chaos. But it went in perfect here. <laughs> So it goes in four and a half turns. That's 22 and a half degrees. Alright, so I noticed that in the research that there are eight layers to the heart. And four of them go like this, and four of them go like this. And when they meet in the middle, they're parallel, and then they reverse. 